Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. For today's valued viewer request we've got from Slow Hornet. Hi Cap, is it possible for skilled DCS pilots to fly low just by using the ground radar to avoid obstacles, e.g. a canyon run without AAA or SAMs but with cloud and fog and zero visibility? I recently tried on a multiplayer server but only managed to smash the biggin into some mountains. Uh, sounds like it was you just using the wrong radar mode. So, we have several air-to-ground radars in DCS. What we found so far, January 2021, is that the F-18 does not have functionality for ground avoidance. Neither does the JF-17, at least not at the moment, but the Vigan does. Whether that's going to change and be added to the other aircraft, we're not sure at the moment. But for now, let's look at the Vigan. We'll first run the canyon with clear visibility so you can see what the radar returns are doing in relation to the actual terrain. Controls we're going to be using today. A1 to get the radar scope going in the mode that we want. Obstacle detection mode, we're going to press that to turn on the terrain avoidance obstacle detection mode. And me, and this is a personal thing, radar MKR gain increase and decrease. I like to increase the gain, it just makes the scope easier to see. Bearing in mind it is a small radar scope compared to say a Hornet or a JF-17 radar scope. There are some other options that you might find useful under the radar submenu here, but just to keep it super simple, I'm just going to stick to these three commands. So let's see what it looks like. A1 radar mode. This is going to give us our typical top-down display, with us being at the centre of the beam origin there. Then we're going to press obstacle mode, ping, and we're going to zoom in. Sorry, that's another thing I should have said. Zoom in or correctly change the radar range increase decrease. So I'm going to zoom that down to 15 kilometres. There we go. It's just going to make the display bigger. And what this radar mode does is to set the radar antenna elevation to be directly to the horizon. So we'll only scan straight and level. It's going to assume that we're going to be flying straight and level with the velocity vector on the horizon line. And it will just show the basic radar returns at that level. And what that's going to form, if for instance you are in a canyon, is a canyon shaped raster image that we can see here. So we're in the middle of this canyon, we're going to want to go forward and go through that guy there. The only slight complaint we have is that we can't zoom in any further than the 15 kilometers display. It'd be nice to go further in. Now, if you're in a canyon, the sides are going to go up and out, up and out. So the lower we are, the smaller this image is essentially going to be. The higher up we are, then the larger the image is going to be because where the radar intersects the mountains is going to be much further out laterally uh, and in longitudinally as well. So being down here at a radar altitude of 70 meters gives us a very small canyon return. Now check that we have got our hard radar altimeter on and our slave SI is till. We're just going to lift the nose up a little. Something more respectable like 200 meters, 200 to 300 meters I recommend. Again, you're using this number here. Okay, and you can see we've got a larger image now. It's much more obvious that we are there. That is the canyon we want to go down. And that is all you need. So you're going to position your view, something like that, so you can see your radar scope and your, uh, your radar altimeter. And we're going to fly. Now we will do this with zero visibility, but for now let's just keep it simple. So you can see the relationship between the canyon walls and the scope display. So it's saying you can go left or right, but it's saying the left looks a bit clearer, so we're going to go left. Now all the time we want to change our altitude here to keep our radar altimeter really above 200 meters. Again, if you go below, well should I say the lower you go, the more skill you need to do this. And I'm not very skilled as you will know. So if I want to keep about 200 to 300, it will give me a good size image that gives me a good kind of 20 seconds to see any obstacles ahead. In theory, we can continue like this and... I can just fly forever and never hit anything. That's the theory. Uh, let's go and try it in practice. Stand by. Let's just pause that and we get our setup. So radar A1 on. Our object avoidance on. Set our range scale down to the smallest. In this case, of course, we're avo avoiding very local terrain. Now, I want to make the raster as bright, bright as possible. So I'm going to increase my MKR, MKR gain. We saw that control earlier made the image as dark as possible it's just going to help me out and we're going to check we're in radar altimeter check we're on uh, slave okay we're going to unpause now we're going to get our altitude up to 200 plus we need a decent image 
generally speaking, the slower we go, we go it's going to be safer because it gives us more time to react to changes in altitude in the terrain. Okay. Got to have faith in the technology here. Now, what this thing hates is harsh maneuvers. Harsh rolls in canyons are very dangerous. Whoop. Just found a bit of terrain there. I'm going to make a left turn now. Watch that radar altimeter. Okay. Also, you've got the refresh rate of the radar to think about. A little bit high, but I think we're okay there. You see we're following this next corridor now. Keep an eye on the speed. Like I said, you don't want to be bombing down here at 500 knots because you just wouldn't get time to react. Keep it so just... Altitude, raster. Altitude, raster. Altitude, raster. It looks like it's... Just going to pause there. It looks like it's suddenly going to disappear. Then that's simply because our valley is going upwards as a valley would do, naturally. And so eventually it's going to converge with the horizon line and disappear. Well, what that means is you need to increase your altitude. You can see our, our radar is decreasing, so we've got to get the nose up now. If I can pause it, there we go. Sometimes you'll have to get a, a, a climb up quite viciously, as you can see there. Some trees have just, uh, have just appeared. That velocity vector above the horizon line, and there we go. Better now. Right, where's the raster taking us now? There it is. Slightly to the right. Altitude's good. Okay, again, you can see on the uh, scope raster image that it's gonna the valley's gonna disappear at some point for the reasons we've just talked about. Good altitude now. I think we're right in the centre of the valley, hence why the radar altimeter. Okay. Okay. You can see it's going to disappear again. That means we need more altitude. Follow it to the right. In terms of the symbology for the Viggen, it's all excellent. You can see we've got altitude indications on the radar scope. Ooh, that just came out of nowhere. Look. Oh, <laughs> now we've got a challenge. I haven't got this far before, so I don't know what's going to happen. We're literally just disappearing at this point. I'm just going to climb. Look at my altimeter. There we go. We're good. Back on track. At the end of the day, worst case scenario, if you suddenly find yourself heading into what appears to be a solid object, just pull up. Put your afterburner on. Okay. No idea where I am in the world, but I'm still alive. Got too slow. Right. And we could pretty much do this all day. Let's see how far we've got. That's quite a good run, actually. So, we've come... All the way down here where we started, we've just done 13 miles in basically zero uh, visibility. That is the basics of the terrain slash obstacle avoidance in the Viggen. I hope that was useful and see you later.